Hi, it's David in the Stained Glass Studio, and <clears throat> about 10 years ago, we put out a video called Repair Lead Came Panel Using a Quick, Cheaper, Copper Foil Method, Part 1. And it's the most viewed video of all of them we've put together. We had 65,000 views in the last 10 years. So it must be pretty popular. So what I thought I'd do here is I'm going to put part one and part two together so that you can see them and you know because you don't want to have to go digging f through all those videos just to find this information. Now one of the things I want to mention we are a copper foil studio. We do not do leaded work. So, people who are leaded glass purists will, will hate this video. And that's okay. You can have your opinion. This is only intended for people who are doing repairs, to be able to fix a leaded glass window and this works really well and it looks so it looks fine it's not perfect so uh, well take a look at it and <clears throat> let me know in the comments what you think I'm uh, working on replacing a broken piece of glass in this window now what I wanted to do was show you the soldering technique but before I talk about that I want to first of all explain some of the things that are going on with this window you'll see that this is a leaded glass window this is put together by with lead the entire piece is puttied into this framework now if we were to do this the proper way the repair would be very costly and the person who owns this doesn't want to spend that much money on doing it the proper way. So what we're doing is just replacing one piece of glass. So the first thing I did before taking the piece of glass out was I taped it up so that uh, it wouldn't fall apart and that we would be able to use it as a pattern when we um, got the piece of glass out and we were ready to do it. Now I'm going to pull this piece, the, the replacement piece out Okay, here's the replacement piece. Now, what I've done, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I've, I went ahead and I used um, very sharp uh, lead nippers to cut away the lead in this part of the, the glass. And I'll show you pictures of that on this video so that you can kind of understand what's going on. But now the thing that needs to be done next is I need to get this piece back in. Now one of the things that has occurred to me as I'm doing it, uh, you'll see I, I've got this big long piece of lead and on this one um, the lead was so deformed that I clipped it off. See the pieces of lead are gone. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side because I believe that it's too long and it'll it'll get deformed it won't stay in place and so I'm just gonna clip this off and then both sides will have to be repaired with a piece of copper foil so it's easy to uh, uh, do this step what you do first of all, uh, what I'm doing here, I'm taking quarter inch foil and I'm going around the replacement piece of glass um, to, uh, to foil it just like you foil any piece when you're working on um, a, a regular copper foil construction. And so I just simply uh, uh, apply the quarter inch foil to each side. Uh, and tape it on in place. Okay. 
Okay. Now that it's done, I just simply uh, burnish it over with, with my fingers, push, push the foil down, and now I can take the pieces of foil and place them on the edge pieces where I cut that uh, lead off. Now, what I do, I found that if I will just line it up and place it right directly on top of the piece of glass, then I'm able to run my fingers across and have it stay in place. Then once it's in place, then I can push it down over the edge of the glass and then push it up underneath so that uh, it's completely foiled. Uh, here, let me show you again. Um, I, I tear it to length. Get the copper ready to go in place. Now you have to be careful to get it uh, stuck down or as you see here, it, it can just pop off. So, so stick it down to the piece of glass, run your fingers along. Now I just use a thumbnail uh, to hold the copper foil in place and then just tear the excess off. And that makes easy work of getting that copper foil in place. Okay, now that I've got the copper foil in place, I can take the replacement piece of glass and the first thing I do is set it on top of that one piece of lead that hasn't uh, uh, been removed. Uh, several of them had to be removed in order to get the uh, the old piece of glass out, but one piece was able to stay in place. Several pieces uh, are in place down below. So now I uh, put the replacement piece into the hole and it's a little bit tight so I take a screwdriver and I just put a little tiny bit of pressure by twisting it and uh, that helps me to be able to to ease it over. Now I got to be really careful because I don't want to uh, uh, hurt my glass. I don't want to chip it. But I, but it, it's a really good tool. Helps me to see. I can just put it in there and just twist it just slightly, and that puts just enough pressure for me to be able to move the glass over. Something that I can't do just with fingers. Okay, now it's in pretty good and I can tell. Now I've got a bit of a gap. I, I wish I didn't have that gap, but uh, it's just uh, a piece of lead is holding it out and I can't quite get it in any tighter than that. So now I can take my copper foil and, and this is a thinner piece. This is not the quarter inch. This is thinner. Uh, and it'll just go right over the the other copper foil and seal it up. And I'm just going to go right around. See how slick that is? It just fills the gap and uh, and this will uh, leave the glass just completely ready for, for the soldering step. But right here you can see this is quite easy to uh, to seal everything up and you know the glass now it's stuck in place it won't fall out of there for any reason 
I mean, I could walk away from this and it would, um, it would stay in place um, just the way I want it. And here we are ready to show you how to do the soldering portion of the uh, um, window repair. Just finished up putting on the copper foil. So now that that's in place, I've got the uh, all of the equipment that I need. My soldering iron is heated up and I've added flux and now I'm going to start soldering. This is just the same soldering technique that we always use when uh, doing a copper foil window. Uh, I have a trash can down below so that if any of the uh, solder does drip through it'll uh, go just right into the trash and I don't have a cleanup problem. But now I just work my way around on the copper foil. If you look down um, towards the bottom middle of the screen you can see there's kind of a gray picture imposed on the uh, video and that's just to keep a, a glare spot from a light bulb that was up above so that it's not so bright when you're watching the video. I have to be very cautious uh, with cleanliness up against the lead because the lead pieces are old and they're oxidized and they don't accept the solder very very readily. On these corners they're okay. Now you'll notice I'm I touch and pull over so that the melted solder can seek its own level and become as smooth as possible. Now up here at the top I have a little more difficulty getting the uh, solder to stick to the lead. Sometimes when this uh, occurs, you'll need to take a brass brush or a piece of sandpaper or steel wool and really work that, uh, that lead in order to get it to stick better. Now from here, it looks pretty good. But I'm looking directly down on it and I can see there's a slight gap in between that top piece of lead. And so now I'm going to take my iron, I'm going to, you know, heat it and scrub it and, uh, and, and kind of pry the, uh, the oxidation loose and also add additional flux. And I'm probably going to have to do that more than once because uh, it's just, uh, it, you know, it's just fight me. See, and from here, from our camera angle, it looks like it's perfectly flat and sealed in place. But from, from the direction I'm looking, I'm able to see that it's not quite uh, good enough move that little ball of solder and go back and kind of work it. Okay. I think I've got it now. I can go on and solder the side pieces. Okay, well now that I've got all that done, I'm ready to flip the window over. Now you can see that glare that uh, that, that little gray box was uh, uh, shielding you from, so you can appreciate that 
that it was there. Okay, now it, it, you can see that most of it is already uh, looks like it's already done because the tops and bottoms of the of the full house piece. Um, the lead is still there, and so just the two sides are required to be repaired on this one. See how the brush went behind that little that little box, that little pitcher. That's just to keep that uh, uh, the glare out of your eyes. Really professional video guys probably know how to do that, and you not even see it, but. So we just go back and uh, that solder seems to stick pretty pretty well to the old lead. So I'm able to just solder right up to it, right on it. I, I heat the lead up. And there it goes. And it flows just perfectly. You notice the technique. It's just a touch and pull off. I'm not dragging the solder and I'm not painting it. I just touch and pull off. Let it seek its own level so it can get just as smooth as possible. Here I'm going to do a little bit of work underneath that little photo insert. But you understand what I'm doing there. Okay, here we are. You can see see it now. Alright, now there it is. Now we're ready to go on to the cleaning steps. So the first thing I do is spray it with quick clean and you notice I get it nice and wet. Now this is to get rid of the flux that I've used while uh, in the soldering process. So I spray it down really good. Then I get a, a good clean rag and I buff it and wash it. I'm not pushing too hard because I don't need to. But now I'm going to take some CJ's and I just put a the size of a coin on there and uh, and I and then I add some water. Then I use a brush. Now the CJ's should get underneath and clean off all of the residues and the um, the flux and it also prepares the lead to be able to accept um, the patina when we put it on. And so it's an important step. We find that we get much better results if we use CJ's and Quick Clean rather than just using one or the other. So I just pull that away. I don't have to be too concerned about it. it once it's once it's out of the way, then I can bring my patina. Now this is Nova Can Black. Now with a, a patina, we try to use a very small rag to apply the patina because the rag won't last. It'll it'll uh, deteriorate and dissolve by the next day. So now I just rub it on on the two places, and I need a little. A uh, bit of darkening, um, but I want it to be more gray, and so I hit it with a quick clean that uh, neutralizes the uh, the patina, and uh, then I just you know wipe it off. Now on this particular window, I'm not going to clean it too good because it's. For the windows for sale in a in a um, a gift shop, and they like the gunkiness to be left on. They don't want their uh, their their old window to look too new. 
and so I'm going to do the same thing on the front side. I apply the quick clean. Now you'll be able to see more of the color matching here because there's more of the lead that's going to need that patina on it. So now we'll put a little bit of the patina. Now I decided to leave off the CJ's uh, step on this, this side because of the results I got on the other side. It was uh, blacker than I wanted it to be and now I want it to be more gray and so I don't want it to accept the patina quite as well as it did but now it was starting to go bronze on me so now I'm going over and adding more patina and getting it to that black look because uh, uh, bronze just doesn't match gray at all okay now I can hit it with this quick clean and I can buff it up Okay, it's David in the stained glass studio and we've just watched the two parts of how to fix a leaded glass window. I hope it was instructive, I hope it was valuable to you. Um, like the video and also leave comments if you will. And if you want to, join us on Patreon. Click on that Patreon button and uh, or go to Patreon and it will um, let you watch several of our video extras without even paying a dime. Or you can join us for, for extra patterns and things of that nature. We, we've tried to organize it so that it's not expensive, so it's really something that you'll feel is valuable. All right, see you next time.